everybody. Welcome to the Sally Allen podcast. As you know, this podcast is a platform for people to come and share their stories of resilience. Uh, once a month, this is my favorite thing to do, come here and record these podcasts at Sticky Pot Studio. Uh, today on the podcast, I have one of my favorite people that I've been following on social media, and I got a chance to meet him at an event called Like Minded Lunch, Mr. Jordan Adler. And Hi, Sally. Hi, Jordan. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here. Um, so to introduce Mr. Jordan, he is an international public speaker. His first book, Beach Money, is an international bestseller. It was published in 2008. I read it twice. Do you know, I read it twice, and I'm going through it one more time. Um, Jordan and those profit goes to Kiva. Uh, eventually, I want you to talk to that a little bit, because all the profits that's being made from this book, Jordan just donates it. Over the past 27 years, he's become one of the top networkers in the world. I'm so inspired by that. Jordan splits his time between his two mountains home, a condo on the Vegas Strip, and the beach, of course. You know, two years ago, he did something so out of his comfort zone, brave and bold. He went and got his private pilot's license. Um, Jordan is also scheduled to become the first network marketer to travel space as part of Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic Civilian Space Program. That's, so, that's such an impressive bio. I think I can end the show right there. <laughs> but Jordan, tell us, you were on a great adventure just a couple of weeks ago. As you know, I'm, I'm following you on social media. Um, tell us a little bit about that and what you're talking about today. Yeah, so I, I just I just returned from Richard Branson's birthday cruise on one of his new cruise ships. And uh, he built four $2.2 billion cruise ships, and he was on the ship with us. Uh, and one of the most amazing things was Richard, as busy as he is, you know, one of his companies is his Virgin Voyages cruise company. He's got 300 companies that he runs, and he took the week to spend with us. And he met every single person that came on the ship personally, a thousand people. He stood for six hours and made sure to meet every single person that came on the ship. And then we spent a week with them out at sea. It was amazing. So, wow. and listen, thank you for inviting me to the show. This was kind of an unexpected surprise. And I really appreciate you uh, bringing me on. Yeah. Um, you know, when I heard you speak at Like Manager, your story just inspired me so much, like, Thank from you. where you were, where you started your journey to where you are now, I think it would inspire a lot of people. And I'd love for you to share that with us because yeah. I, my jaw was on the floor most of the time as I was listening to your story. Thank you so much. I picked yeah. up a book at a garage sale um, that I paid 25 cents for. And it was called The Ten Napkin Presentations by Don Faila. And I had no exposure to being an entrepreneur growing up in the south suburbs of Chicago. I didn't know that I was wired as an entrepreneur. I didn't know that because I had no exposure to it. And I saw this book that grabbed my attention. And it was the first time that I was introduced to the idea of residual income, getting paid over and over again for working one time. But I was, um, you know, my dad made $28,000 a year at his peak. And he required the three of us, myself and my two sisters, he required us to go to college, but he would pay for one year. And then we had to figure out how to pay for the rest. And so I went and got a degree in landscape architecture. I worked my way through college, took out no loans. And then right out of school, I took a guitar, a suitcase and 250 bucks that I'd gotten as birthday gifts. And I moved to Arizona from Chicago, uh, knowing one person and uh, just fumbled my way through the, the beginning of my working career. But I was always interested in entrepreneurial things. So I was signing up in different companies like network marketing companies, trying different opportunities. And most of them I saw in classified ads, a couple people approached me. But over the course of the next 10 years, I, I had lots of different jobs, including I was a draftsman. I worked at a gym. I rented roller skates, anything I could do just to pay the bills. And I lived in a little rental uh, and uh, I started signing up in all these different companies. And over the course of 10 years, I signed up in 11 different network marketing companies, one at a time. I'd usually be in there for two or three months. I would get discouraged and I would quit. And I did that for 10 years, 11 companies, never had any success. And I joined my 12th company. And in that company, you know, they say when opportunity and preparation come together, that's when things begin to happen. Well, I had been reading every book I could get my hands on. I'd been listening to audio tapes and certainly a lot of practice getting in and out of these companies. I learned some very simple things. And in my 12th company, while I was living in an enclosed garage, my job paid me 
uh, $14,000 a year. I was 34 years old. I had a broken down Jeep in the street. I had $36,000 on credit cards, on 22 credit cards. And I joined my 12th company. And in that company, I finally figured out that that I, I cracked the code, so to speak. And I made $8 million in that company. And I recruited an army and had a blast traveling all over the world, moved out of the garage, got a couple nice cars and started living the life of my dreams that I'd been really focused on for so many years, just the struggle, trying to figure it all out. And it just, everything came together uh, in my 12th company. And uh, I've been on a wild, exciting entrepreneurial ride ever since then. Wow. So for anybody who's in, you know, they're new in network marketing, they've tried several companies. Why did you think you fail? And what was that code that you cracked when you finally were successful? The reason I failed what, first of all, it had to do with personal insecurities. You know, I had lots of doubts in myself, didn't really believe in myself. Uh, I still I still struggle with that today, and there's no reason for it. It's just the way I'm wired from being a child and hearing certain things that get anchored. That really never goes away. I, I still have it, but, I, but I've overcome it. And one of the things that I've done to overcome that is whenever I feel discouraged or doubtful or uh, frustrated or stopped. I just keep working. You know, I just do the work. I've made a commitment. I'm ba- I'm making my, my, I'm building my business based on what I'm committed to is more than what, how I'm feeling. And that's, I think the biggest thing. Most people decide when they're going to do their business or work or whether they're even going to stick around. Most people decide that based on how they're feeling. And you can't build a business that way. No business. It's just like a relationship. You can't build a relationship based on how you're just on how you're feeling, because there's times where you just need to be committed um, because that's the, that's the thing that will get you through the challenges. So I made a decision and it was in, it was right around the time that I joined my 12th company. I made a conscious decision that I was no longer going to uh, continue to work based on how I was feeling. I did it based on what I was committed to. So I'll just tell you a quick story. I was, um, Backstage at an event, this was not that long ago, there were 8,000 people in the audience and it's dark backstage and all the sound equipment's back there, all the, the cords that run, you know, are running in all these different directions and it's dark, but up on the front of the stage, it's bright and they had smoke going on the stage and this guy was introducing me and he was given about a two minute introduction. His, came, his name is Curtis Broom. And uh, <clears throat> I was wired up, I had my little microphone on up here and I was wearing my suit. And I had my cell phone in my suit pocket and literally seconds before walking on stage, my phone vibrates. And I know I shouldn't have looked at my phone, but I pulled my phone out right before walking on stage. I looked down at the text message. It's from my sister in Chicago. And she says, dad's going to die tonight. And that's what she says on this text message as Mm -hmm. I'm walking on stage. And my dad had been sick. Um, and I, and Eric and Marina saw my face and they knew something was wrong and they came over and they said, are you okay? And I'm like, I just got this message while Eric, while, while Curtis is introducing me, all this is going on. And I had to make a split second decision. Do I tell Eric and Marina, I can't do it. I got to leave. I got to go see my dad. Or do I jump on stage? Because that's what I was committed to. And literally in a matter of a split second, I just thought, you know what? I made this commitment. I make my I make my business decisions based on what I'm committed to. I need to do this 20 minute talk. There's no way I'm getting back to Chicago on a Friday night that late. So I went up there and I did it. I didn't tell the audience. Um, Eric and Marina gave me a hug. I ran home, booked my flights, and I got to spend a couple of weeks with my dad in his final days. And he was fully conscious and we had a chance to really talk. So, you know, I I just, it's a, it's a, there's so many days where you don't want to do your business. That's normal. And because we all have struggles in our business and it's not always easy. And there's times where we want to throw in the towel. There's times we want to, you know, set things aside because it's just too hard, but those are when you learn your lessons. And so I've just learned and decided, and that's really was my, that was the pivot point for me. Mm -hmm. And, and so I had never been with the company for more than two or three months. And the last company I was with, I was there 13 years. And the company I'm with now, I've been with for 17 years. And I've had many, many, many times that I've wanted to quit. There's been times where 
I was fighting with our founder and I love him and he's one of my best friends, mm -hmm. but there were times where we were at odds. There were times where I didn't like decisions that had been made. There were times where I made major, I made bad decisions, but I, I decided that I'm going to work through them rather than quitting. And I think that is a, that is a um, defining decision that you can make that will make a huge difference in your future. Yeah. So I want to go back to your two words and uh, I'm really sorry about your dad's passing. Oh, thank you. That and, and that's ironclad, like you going up there and saying, I'm not going to go by feeling, but I'm going to go do what I'm committed to do. And I'd like you to share a little bit more on that because that's something you have to build over the years. It doesn't just come. You don't shift the mindset overnight. What are some of the things you did to get to that mindset to say, I'm going to be committed to me, I'm going to be committed to my business, and I'm not going to follow these feelings that are coming? What are some of the things that you did to help you with that? Well, I would actually probably differ a little bit with one thing that you said, and that, that it doesn't, it does happen in an instant. It's a decision. Mm -hmm. And a decision happens in an instant. You can go on, on and on and on trying to decide, but that's not a decision. That's just, that just creates a lot of confusion. So I have a home in an old mining town up in Jerome, Arizona. I, I think I may have told this story the day that we met. Um, I'm on, on the third story is my living room. And I, I do a lot of my Zooms from the living room. And there's a screen door that leads out to a deck that looks out over Sedona. And then there's a big picture window right behind me. And so one day that screen door was open and a hummingbird flew in and flew right over to the picture window behind me. And I was getting ready to leave and I was gonna be gone for a couple of weeks. And that hummingbird wanted to fly towards the window. I couldn't get him to go towards the door and they're very fast. I couldn't catch him. I tried to catch him for like an hour and it was just pissing him off and I was getting <laughs> frustrated. And uh, finally, after two hours, I didn't wanna leave because I knew he'd end up dead on the windowsill because there's no way out if he's wanting to go towards that window. So. I got a pitcher, he got tired. He finally sat up on the rim of the pitcher, walked him out over by the door and he flew off. And so for those of you that are concerned about the hummingbird, he's fine. <laughs> um, but the moral of the story or the point is that that little hummingbird thought that his way out was through that window. And ultimately that window represented struggle and death to him. But 10 feet away, there was a wide open door and that's all that hummingbird would have had to do is shift its focus just in a little bit different direction and it could effortlessly fly to freedom. And mm -hmm. I find myself doing that at times, I know you have as well, where you feel like you're working and working and working and working and you're getting frustrated because nothing is happening or you're not getting the growth that you expect or you're just running up against one problem over to the next. And sometimes it's just a simple matter of shifting your focus. And the hummingbird did not need a better hummingbird flying coach it wasn't like it needed to learn how to fly. It knew how to fly. It just needed to learn how to shift its attention. Mm. So I'll give you one example. Mm -hmm. If you're attracting a lot of negative stuff into your life, or if things just aren't going your way, it might be as simple as what you send out comes back. Mm. You might want to take a look at like, what are you sending out into the world every day? You know, there's a vibrational energy of, uh, there's a vibrational energy that's created by words, actions, and behaviors and uh, beliefs, rather, words, actions, and beliefs, that vibrational energy gets sent out into the world. And what comes back to you is dependent on what you're sending out. Mm -hmm. So if you're complaining a lot or blaming a lot, or if you spend a lot of time in your thoughts just being really discouraged, mm -hmm. that sends out a really negative vibration and good things don't will not come to you when you're mm -hmm. in that state. So you have to shift that. And sometimes it's a conscious shift mm -hmm. where you're sending out things like, you know, uh, compliments, uh, being, being uh, enthusiastic or having a positive attitude. If you find yourself in that negative space, and sometimes it's easier said than done, but that's just a, like a minor shift that can completely shift the energy between you and the people around you and things be people and things come to you they're attracted to you because of what you're sending out. So think about this for a minute. Everything positive that's ever happened to you in your life, most likely it's come to you as a result of meeting one person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. think about everything, everything good that's ever happened to you in your life. When I look back on my life and I think about the most fantastic things that have happened to me, it's usually as a result of meeting one person at the right time. 
And we're human beings and we tend to think in a linear fashion, meaning that we think we got to do this and then we have to do this and then we have to do this and then we have to do this to get to where we want to go. But that's not, that's not the way it works in real life. You know, that's us as conscious human beings trying to invent our path. And it almost never happens that way. It happens like a, like a uh, spontaneous combustion when, or like a big bang, when two people come together and then instantly everything changes and it takes you in a direction that leads you to your dreams, not because you planned it step by step by step. So it's about sending out the right energy so you attract the right people. And those are the people that are going to ultimately lead you to your destiny. Yeah. And, and there is a saying you, you are like a combination of the five people you hang out with. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I love what you're saying there reminds me of one of the things I heard you talk about is the book. It's the who, not the what. Who, not the how. Uh, not, the, not the how. The who, not the how. And yeah. I, I've been going through it and it's just simply blowing my mind. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's really about, yeah, the book is about, you don't really need to know how. Right. But, but you need to know who. You need to know who. And that's what you're saying. All the people, yeah. everything negative that has happened in our lives, it's because of people that we surround ourselves with and what vibrations yeah. we send out. So I absolutely love that. So Jordan, tell us a little bit about your business and what you've been doing. Yeah. So, so I joined my 13th network marketing company at, around 17 years ago. So I've been with the company now 17 years and we have an amazing technology that's like a secret weapon. It's such a phenomenal technology. It's an app that sits on your phone and you can send out personal photographic cards from your phone in the mail. Wow. So you've got photos on your social media. You've got photos in your phone. You can put those on a card. You can add templates. We've got templates. You can type in personal messages. And when you hit the send button, our company does the rest. Our company prints it, stuffs it, seals it, stamps it, and sends it for you. If you're sending a photo postcard, that just goes in the mail, but you do it right from the phone. You hit the send button and we do the rest. And so it's great for people that want to send out that positive energy that we were talking about every day to yeah. people in their life, um, clients. And so I've been, uh, we've got a program, it's 97 bucks a month and you can send unlimited cards and it includes postage anywhere in the world. It's a powerful tool and you can send out gifts and gift cards and things like that. I've been building that business uh, for quite a long time now and have, uh, We've got over a million customers in five countries using our service to make for customer relationship marketing. Wow. What's the name of that app, Jordan? It's uh, it's sendoutcards.com. Sendoutcards.com. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to go to a great sales page, that'll give you an idea of how it all works. Yeah. It's sock, S O C mm -hmm. photo postcard, sock, photo postcard.com forward slash two, nine, eight, eight sock, photo postcard.com forward slash two nine eight eight. And if you go there, um, you can click on that learn more button and learn all about it. It's pretty phenomenal. Yeah. So, I'd be using it whether I was involved in the business or not. No, I I'm definitely checking that out because I do like what you said about staying in that positive mindset and um, sending out a positive word to someone. And yeah. nobody receives cards these days. So it's, it's right. quite a surprise to get something in the mail, right? And not Absolutely. in an email. Yeah. So Tell me about Kiva. I know all of the charity from your book goes to Kiva.org. Why Kiva? And what this, I, I looked it up a little bit, but you tell us about it. Yeah, Kiva is a worldwide organization. They're the largest micro lending organization in the world. And when I launched my book, Beach Money, I knew I wanted to, we were trying to figure out what kind of a, a nonprofit or a charity we could create. And then a friend of mine found Kiva and they, they have funded literally hundreds of thousands of micro loans to entrepreneurs in developing countries all over the world. And you can, it's a great, if you've got some children, if you've got kids, um, take them to the website. They can look at the, the people that are looking for loans and they can see what their business plan is on there and how they plan on paying the money back. And I just thought it would feed the entrepreneurial machine. It allows an individual who lives in a small village in in say South America that wants to contribute to their community, they can start a business, solve a problem, maybe they need $200 to do that. And they say what that money's gonna go for and how they're gonna make money to pay it back. And now they're bringing, now they're bringing revenue to their community rather than just taking from the community. And so it's, it's phenomenal. And so as a result of the profits from my book, Beach Money, 
We've helped literally thousands and thousands of people start businesses all over the world. Wow, Jordan, that's pretty impressive. And it speaks of your heart that you, you genuinely care about people. I when I read that, I'm like, that's the best kept secret about you. <laughs> I've never heard you talk about that anywhere. So thank you for sharing that. And thanks, thanks for pouring back into not just the community, Las Vegas and the U.S., the world. Absolutely. Really thank you. Pouring down. So let's talk about something fun. How did you get scheduled to, you know, to this space program? <laughs> well, you know how I said everything great that ever happens to you happens because of yeah. that one person, right? Yeah. So I was in, I had many years ago, long before they were talking about civilian space travel, many years before that, I wrote a goal in a journal and I can remember writing it. And I remember when I wrote it, I thought to myself, this will never happen. The only people that go to space are, you know, one out of a million people that, that have it as a dream. And they usually are fighter pilots or people that are in the military, they become astronauts. But mm -hmm. during that time frame, I wrote down space traveler in a journal as a goal, as a dream. And I knew when I wrote it, that it would never happen. Well, many, many years later, like I'm talking tw over 20 years later, I was at a Marriott in Salt Lake City. And I was going down to the Starbucks at six o'clock in the morning. Who would have ever guessed that it would happen at six o'clock in the morning in Salt Lake City <laughs> in front of a Starbucks in a Marriott? And I was down there by myself and this woman came down and she had short red hair. And I introduced myself to her. Her name was Carolyn. She asked, we started talking and uh, I asked her what she did. And she told me she was a travel agent. And knowing what I know about the travel business, I just assumed that she wasn't doing very well. And so I said, how's it going? And she goes, oh, my gosh, I've just had my best year ever. I'm going, really? What do you do? She goes, I book space. And I'm like, space? I'm thinking space in hotel rooms, space on cruise ships. She goes, no, space. And she points up. Oh. And I go, what do you mean? She goes, I'm selling tickets on Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic Civilian Space Program, which, by the way, didn't exist at that time. Oh, wow. There was no space ports. There was no ships being built. It was all just on a brochure. And so they contacted me a month later. I didn't even tell her about my dream. They contacted me a month later and said they were going to be in Las Vegas. And so I met with a woman named Rose Kingscoat. And Rose uh, worked side by side with Richard Branson in, um, in England and at the Virgin offices. And, and she showed me the brochures and she showed me what the spacecraft are going to look like. And she showed me You'll go 2,400 miles per hour, three times the speed of sound, and you'll get to experience weightlessness and see the earth, the curve of the earth and all those things. And I, on my 57th birthday, I wired, um, I wired 250,000 to Virgin Galactic to be one of the first civilians in space. I haven't gone yet, but <laughs> I'm on the list. I'm scheduled to go. And, uh, but what's been great is it's been six years since that, since I, signed up in the program. Yeah. But during those six years, I've gotten to know Richard Branson almost to the point where I could call him a friend. Yeah. Uh, I've spent many hours with him. I've spent many hours with many of his associates, his family, people that are involved in the program. The money that I spent on that, just the six years leading up to the trip was worth the money and more. The yeah. relationships, the connections, the experiences. You know, I was at the spaceport in Las Cruces when Richard went to space and I was there to watch him go, wow. you know, and be around his community. So, um, yeah, so that was a result of meeting one person. And of course I found the journal where I wrote the goal down, which was yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> How many years later when you wrote that goal down? It's been over 20 years. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah. that, that's amazing. Tell me, I'm, trying to wrap my brain around this. Tell me about your mindset when this woman told you about this program. Were you like, are you crazy? Or were you like, yeah? No, 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 no. I got really excited. I didn't think she was crazy at all. I knew yeah. that. I knew Richard was up to something. And right. Yeah. And so when she told me, I got excited, but I didn't want to tell her about the goal until I actually found the journal. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I did eventually tell her about my goal. And, uh, but when they contacted me, like I didn't even she said, if, if they ever come to Vegas, do you want to meet them? And I'm like, sure. Yeah. And then yeah. it turned out they came to Vegas. And so we actually have next week a dinner with Virgin. They're coming to town um, and Richard won't be here, but I am meeting with some of his team here in yeah. Vegas. We're going out to dinner to get Italian food next week. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, it comes back to what we talked about uh, some a couple of minutes ago about the who. Yes, it's all. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. all about the who. I can't imagine. That's the why. That's why networking is so important yeah. and so powerful, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's a podcast like here that you watch one of Sally's podcasts and you hear something that completely 
changes the trajectory of your life because you heard a, someone on that you wrote, you ended up reading their book. And because you read their book, it led you to something else that ultimately led to something great in your life that you wouldn't have ever thought about or planned. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah, you never know. You just never know. So what's the takeaway today for our audience? Hmm. Uh, let's see. That's a, <laughs> you threw me a little curveball here. <laughs> takeaway. Um, so if you have dreams that are unfulfilled, instead of shrinking your life down. So instead of shrinking your dreams down to meet your current situation, consider expanding your life to meet your dreams. Mm. Every dream is attainable, but it requires four things. The first thing it requires is to have the dream, right? That's the first thing, right? Of course. Mm -hmm. The second thing is you got to write it down. Normally dreams don't happen unless you write them down. So whatever it is you want to do, even if you don't believe it, most of the big dreams that I've had that I did not that I've achieved, I did not believe they were possible when I wrote them down. So you don't need to believe them in order to write them down. And it's scary because you're writing down something that you're not really sure about. This is how I learned to fly helicopters. I doubted myself. I, I could not believe that I could ever fly a helicopter, but I wrote it down. It seemed like surreal almost, but it was exciting to, the thought of it was exciting. The third thing is you need to trust the process, meaning that there are probably people that have gone before you. So you have to trust the process. If you plug yourself into the same process, you can get there. And then the last one, it's probably the most difficult for most people. And it's related to some of the things we talked about earlier. And that is to see the job through. To don't stop until it's done. No matter how tough things get, keep yourself, understand that you're in the process of learning. You're always, you always want to keep your, space, your, your mind space in a place of learning and growing. So whatever your dream is, if you'll write the dream down, trust the process and see the job through, meaning don't quit until it's done, you can have any dream that you uh, put out there. Wow, thank you so much, Jordan. Just this 30 minutes, you've added so much value. I'm like, my page is filled with notes. All right. <laughs> I have so much notes on here. I wanna thank you so much for coming um, you, you know, and sharing on this podcast. I, you know, friends, I, I always say it's never too late to start living resiliently. And uh, one of my takeaways here today is what Jordan said, um, commit, commit to what you said you're going to do. You can't always follow your feelings. Because that day, right. if you had followed your feelings, when you saw that text, you would have never gone on stage and, and spoke, right? You just, I'm committed to this. I'm going to do it. So many things. So many yeah. things in my life like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I thank you again. I know you're busy. And um, anybody who hangs out with Richard Branson has to be very <laughs> busy. <laughs> So I appreciate your time. And um, I want to thank our audience for watching. If you like our show, rate, review, and share it with your friends. want to thank Sticky Pot Studio and Travis behind the wheels. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Travis. Yes. Thanks again. Oops.